Good morning, Delray Beach. I actually opened up a space for this talk to begin to evolve back in July. And when I did, or maybe what provoked it, was this song, Dream On. You remember the song from Aerosmith? It just leapt into my head for some reason. And I love it. I love the sound of it. I love the lyrics. I surely, surely love the singer. I love his crazy, outrageous locks and his big mouth and his big presence. I love the way he jumps around the stage. And I love his lyrics. He's a brilliant, brilliant lyricist. Dream on, he says. Dream on. Dream until your dreams come true. Dream on. Dream on. Dream until your dreams come through. Dream on. Dream on. I've always been a dreamer. How about you? I asked that question in front of a live audience this past Sunday, and nearly everyone in the room raised their hand when I asked the question, do you consider yourself a dreamer? When I was a child, my dreamer was rarely fo my dreaming was rarely focused. I'd stare out a window or stare up at the sky, stare at the clouds. When I was bored, when I was frightened, when I was uncomfortable for any reason, I dreamed. I I used that dream to transport me to a different place, to a different environment, to a different time. As this talk began to percolate, I continued to reflect on dreaming at the very same time that I picked up a book to begin to prepare to lead a six-week-long book study. And the meaning of dreaming crystallized for me. The meaning of dreaming for me became spiritual. Dreaming, I understood, has to be focused. It has to be focused on my purpose. The book I'm referring to is the book called What Are You? And the author is Imelda Shanklin, who was born in 1865 and died in 1953. Do you know about Ms. Shanklin? In 1907, Unity School of Christianity had four employees. One of them was Imelda Shanklin. In 1918, Charles Fillmore ordained her as a unity minister. In 1919, she became editor of We Wisdom magazine, and that same year became editor of all unity publications. She remained in that position for the next 18 or 19 years, and then she retired to focus on her own books, and she wrote about six of them. This one, What Are You, is my favorite and probably her most popular. So I picked up this book, Dream On has been in my head for some reason, and I reread this book for the third time, and here's what I saw. And the words leapt off the page. They leapt off the page. So I invite you to hear them with your eyes closed. I invite you to allow them to sink into your DNA as Miss Shanklin speaks, speaks directly to you through me. Your objective, she says, is the most important consideration in your life. There's no definite place in life for you while you keep your mind purposeless. If you live merely because you're alive, for you, there will be no quickening of the pulses. For you, there will be no eager intake of breath in the morning, as you have nothing, nothing but hours before you. For you, there will be no grateful outgo of breath in the evening, as you have not accomplished that which commands content. The magnificent unrest, the goading joy, the tingle 
that comes of matching adequacy with need will be yours when you choose a work, swear before God to do that work, and then with all your strength set about doing. End of quote. Oh, oh my goodness. When I read those words, friends, I closed my eyes. They filled up with tears. I smiled on the inside. I felt like Miss Shanklin reached out and touched me directly. And I was grateful. Grateful. Dream on. Yes, dream on. And friends, dream on purpose. Dream on purpose. There it was. My new definition, my new idea around dreaming. Dream on purpose. Choose your work while you're dreaming, friends. Land on it, decide it, and then dream about it. When you choose a work, she asked in her quote, choose a work? <laughs> I turned my life upside down years ago to prepare to teach and speak about unity principles. Unity's explanation relating to life. Unity's ideas about God and birth and death, the Bible, Jesus, human beings, hate, sin, and on and on and on. I turned my life upside down. I left a profitable endeavor on an upward trajectory toward greater profitability. I placed my marriage on very shaky ground, albeit temporarily, by picking up and moving off to Lee Summit, Missouri for two years, simply so that I could immerse myself immerse myself in these teachings and prepare myself to share my understanding of them with others. It was easy to do because my purpose was crystal clear. Crystal clear. I decided right then and there to, to fulfill that purpose, to realize that purpose, to live that purpose, to the best of my ability for the rest of my life, to give it my mind, body, and my spirit, my heart, and my soul. And the truth, friends, the truth is that since my husband died in 2015, I've only dabbled in my purpose. Dabbled. Now, I have no regrets, hear me. It served me until now to give just a small part of myself to my objective. I, I needed to recover from the loss of the pillar of my strength for over 40 years. I needed to recover from the long and exhausting business of being his caretaker. I needed to rest. I needed to grieve. I needed to heal. I needed precious self-care time. I needed to redefine myself, and I took the time. And now the time is past. The time is past. I think about my dear friend, Ann Mays, and her favorite expression. Ann says, I'm alert, alive, awake, and enthusiastic. Friends, I am all of that. Hmm. When I retired from church ministry in 2016, I dabbled in my purpose, as I said. I spoke as a guest speaker on average about once a month. I taught approximately two classes a year for one unity church or another. And then this summer, my life began to change again dramatically. In June, I began a month-long talk series for Unity of Port St. Lucie, where I used to serve as a full-time minister. I hadn't spoken continuously over the course of an entire month 
since I retired from church ministry in 2016. And in that con continuity, in that continuity, I began to wake up. My life had purpose again. I was reminded of that purpose. It, purpose hadn't changed. The purpose hadn't changed. My commitment to it had changed. I began to wake up. There's in continuity, there was something going on. It's, it's being in a creative flow. It's catching the thread of a talk and then allowing it to work you. And then when you deliver it, to pick up on reaction and allow that to percolate and create another thread and so on. I was creating consistently, reflecting on spiritual messages and spiritual matters. And I realized as the month went on, about mid-June, actually, I realized what I was feeling, joy. I was doing my work. I was focused squarely and completely on my purpose again. All the while, reading Miss Shanklin's book and sharing it with people online. In that book, there was another passage of hers that leapt off the page and spoke to me deeply. She says this, quote, work if you would grow into your ideal. No man becomes a saint in his sleep. All seasons are yours. The objective fades if it's not pursued. All things in the marts of life are bought at par value. There are no bargain counters at the place of exchange where God gives himself to you in the precise measure of your giving yourself to him. Having chosen your objective, are you willing to pay the price of the prize? The price is the devotion of your courage, your ability, your time, your very blood. The price is you. If you have purpose, if you have spirit, if you feel yourself to be alive, you will pay. You will pay gladly and you will thank God for the opportunity of receiving at any rate of exchange. Ask me, friends, does God give in direct proportion to my devotion, to my purpose? And the answer is a resounding yes. Mind you, my list of examples is long, but let me share some highlights with you. So when I began to realize what was happening and I was on fire again and I was renewing my commitment to my purpose in June, I spoke to Unity of Port St. Lucie about it and they said, please come back. Please come back and speak as often as you want. Teach as many classes as you want. Pray with us and we ask nothing in return. We'll run the place. Well. Wow. That's a dream gig, friends. I am not responsible for unlocking the door or locking it up or turning the thermostat back to where it's supposed to be. Amen. Thank you, God. This is a dream come true. So when they said yes, resoundingly yes, clearly yes, I went home and I put my condo on the market immediately. I had a friend from the church up there in Daytona Beach who's a real estate agent. I called her and I said, Fran, how about selling my condo for me? She said, fair enough. How much? Come, let me come see it, blah, blah, blah. So I took, I did a little research and I found out, I live in a high rise, so I found out what similar condos in my building have sold for. And then I just arbitrarily placed mine on the market for the highest price that I saw there. And then I expected to wait around for a month or maybe two. That gave me lots of time, I thought, to tell my friends and my family what I was doing. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> my home sold within 30 hours. 30 hours. <laughs> Five people looked at it, two of them online. Five people. And three of them made an offer. 
<laughs> my real estate, my realtor managed those offers and we had a bidding war. I ended up selling my home for thousands of dollars over my asking price. And I never saw that coming. Yeah. <laughs> Are you paid in kind? In kind? In direct proportion to the amount of time and energy you decide to do your work? Your highest work? Your best work? I think so. The new owners of my place wanted to close in 45 days, so I needed to hustle. I needed to come down here to Port St. Lucie. I needed to choose a bunch of properties. I needed to narrow it down, and I needed to spend two days deciding which one I was going to buy. It was exhausting, and guess what? One of the members of the board at Unity of Port St. Lucie is a realtor, and she called me and said, let me help you. <laughs> Does the universe pay back in kind? I think so. She ended up showing me 24 properties over the period of two days. I narrowed it down to three. God directed me to the right and perfect one. There was no doubt in our mind. She advised me on making an offer which I thought was lower than I should. But I realized I was paying her for her expertise, so I said yes, reluctantly. And she ended up saving me eight thousand dollars. Does the universe pay you back? I think so. I decided this time when I moved I wasn't going to ask my friends and family. I decided this time when I moved I would use some of my, um, my, my, my receipts in order to pay a professional. So I went about the business of finding one and I was shocked that the price that came in was so fair I was blown away by the exquisite service they provided me. The two men who packed up my stuff on one end and unloaded it on the other were the kindest, gentlest, nicest people with whom I've worked in a long time. I decided to sell all my furniture. I went to Facebook Marketplace on my granddaughter's recommendation. It sold quickly and easily, and the people who came to buy, to buy every piece fell in love with what they bought. My friend Carol just completed a move from Oklahoma, or Indiana, pardon me, Carol, Indiana to Florida, and she bought professional moving boxes for her move. She gave them all to me. Gave them, and I used every one. She gave me packing material. She gave me labels for those boxes. It goes on and on and on. I came down here. I bought a home that needed a lot of tender, loving care. Tender, loving care, that's all. It just needs a complete facelift. Everything inside is a little dated and a little yellow with age. I knew I'd need to find someone who could be my handy person. And I thought about how I was going to locate them at the very same time that the president of the board of Unity of Port St. Lucie said, well, you know, my friend Jeff and I do that kind of business part time. Let us help you. <laughs> Friends, I, I, what can I say? All of it just humbles me. But that's the truth of it. It's the truth that when you decide what your purpose is and then you commit to it 100%, the universe throws open doors, kicks down walls, places resources right in front of your nose. I have one last one I have to share Jeff and Sherry were in my home when this happened, and Jeff giggled. It was so funny. One of the things I had to do as a new homeowner in a new county was to file uh, an application to receive my homestead exemption, rather to remove it from Volusia County and, and, and forward it to St. Lucie County. And so I did that online because their offices are closed. It was fairly easy. I checked all the boxes and used an electronic signature and sent it off. And the very next day, I received a phone call 
from the tax appraiser's office. And this lovely woman on the other end said, I'm looking at your application and I'm looking at your history here because I used to live in Port St. Lucie and I noticed that you didn't choose to receive the additional exemption because your husband is a retired disabled veteran. And I said, no, I didn't. And she said, may I ask you why? I said, well, because he's dead. I didn't think I was entitled. And she said, ah, but you are. How often does a government agency call you, reach out and call you and say, I found a way for you to save some money? Friends, wow. <laughs> True stories, every one of them. Ah. <sighs> Since I said yes to coming back here, you, Unity of Delray Beach, have asked me to speak occasionally. Unity of Jensen Beach has asked me if I could carve out some time for them, and it continues to evolve. I like to think of myself as living in the flow right now, living in the flow. You know Daniel Namod, I know you do, we all do, and I, I'm sure you love him every bit as much as I do. One of my favorite Daniel songs is called Water. And in that song he says this, I want to be like water coming down a mountain into the shadowy canyons, flowing from pool to stream. I want to be like water, head uphill no more, I am bound for the sea. I am bound for the sea of infinite potentiality. How about you? What's your purpose, friends? Are you dreaming? Are you dreaming? Do you have a purpose? If you do, have you placed it on a shelf, maybe? Have you placed it on a shelf because you're too tired right now? to do anything about it? You're too old to do anything about it? You're too this or that or the other? Is that your truth with a small T? Well, if it is, get it off the shelf and dust it. Polish it up. Dream, dream, dream on. Dream on purpose. You don't have one, you say? Well, let me, let me suggest one. Let me suggest that you claim as your purpose creating the kind of world in which you want to live. The kind of world in which you want to live. How about if you spend some time visioning it? Really, seriously, visioning it. Spending some time thinking about it, defining it, illustrating it. What kind of world do you want to live in and then dream about it on purpose? Dream about it. Make it happen by every thought, word, and deed every single solitary day. If you don't have a purpose, try that one. Whatever you do, friends, dream on and dream on purpose. Namaste.